Listener Production. G'day everybody, Rusty here, all set for part two of my pod with David Reynolds, released just a week out from the start of the 2024 season of Supercars. We hope you're all excited about that. We will talk about his new chapter in the Team 18 Camaro in this one and a whole lot more. A reminder, if you've arrived here and perhaps missed part one, make sure you check that out too. From growing up in Albury and the family love of racing, how he almost took a professional tennis path the powerful motivator of never having a certain future in his early days and why he thought at times that Formula Ford and Porsche Carrera Cup might mark the end of the road for his racing dream. You'll find part one in the garage library, all good to go. This seems stupidly PC to do, but someone will probably tell me that neither of us are medicos in this conversation when it comes to the very small part where we chat about the pandemic and his views around the vaccine. Can we please keep the pandemic in the bloody rear view mirror? And let's just accept that his view might be different to others. Respect the difference of opinion and let's leave it at that, okay? We begin part two of this conversation by focusing on his time with another big team in the supercars pit lane and a different manufacturer. A move to blue that would really mark his arrival in the sport. Can we come to the the um the Tickford chapter for you yeah. now? Can we can we look at it in a in a in a framed way, right? What 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 is your takeaway from that that period with them now? Was Tickford. there yeah Tickford? I mean, was was there unfinished business? Was there stuff that you're massively proud of? Maybe give us a balanced view of both. Um, both. Yeah, I suppose when I joined that team. I was like the young driver, hmm. still the young driver, and I had Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom in the in the two main cars they called them, yeah. and I was the third car. Good benchmarks, gun, yeah, gun. awesome. Hmm. Like they were guns, and those old school cars, unreal. Yeah, and did you like? Did you like those oh, cars? I love those cars. Yeah. They were so much fun. They yeah. were just really cool supercars to drive, hmm. and they reminded me of what I grew up watching. Watching, yeah. and just the stuff you could do with them, and the amount of engineering the boys used to put into them were ridiculous. Like there was at one point. Um, everyone started running water brakes. Mm-hmm. So to cool our brakes down, they used to have this little tank in the back. They used to come in, fill up the fill up the water tank and the fuel as well. And we used to spray water on the brakes to try and cool them down so we could cool our front tyres down so we could, you know, have faster lap speed. But by the end, um, they had they had water brake spray, rim spray, uh, <laughs> rear brake spray, rim spray, and they had like like. We used to come in for like say a hundred kilos of water and fifty kilos of water that we used to spray over like hundred kilos laps. of fuel and fifty kilos it was of water. R- ridiculous! It was just pouring out. It was so much fun watching all that happen, and it made yeah. a big difference to our lap and our our lap speed and our performance. So yeah. it was unreal to watch all that sort of unfold, and that sort of wasn't happening until I got there. And then they heard of like Triple Eight doing all this stuff and. And all the all, and just what they were trying to do during the race, and that's mm. that's where all the engineers started building stuff. And then mm. oh, we don't have enough water. Like they built like a tank of thirty liters, and then they had to like weld this other like twenty liter like tank onto it to try and make more water. It was just cool. Just all the stuff they used to do was unreal. Yeah. I, I really miss those periods. Like you, you fast forward today, where everyone's got the same shocks, the same this, mm. the same that. Mm. There's no real engineering being put into the cars. It's all about yeah, it's all about yeah. tuning mm. and and matching your car to the track mm. and the tyre on the day and getting the most out of it. So, you know, back then it was way more wild where they could build so many cool things and, mm. you know, all the test days were always trying, Something. you know, different mm. different brand of shocks, different brand of this, different different upright, different steering arms, different clevises. Everything mm. was just so much more fun and, and enjoyable where, you know, over time they try and, you know, wean it down and mm. make them not, not, not stupider but mm. just more, more formula-based, which is... You know, arguably it's not as fun for the engineers, so mm. it's harder to actually attract probably good engineers. Mm. Some people have a viewpoint that that is a little bit be careful what you wish for too, because if everyone's got the same widget to an extent, and yep. you, I mean you're all um, operators at, at you know the you know such an incredible level, um, how do you then get you know one stand out over another? Whereas in years gone yep. by, some of those those funky little innovations that they, they were the things that set you apart weren't they oh for yeah. sure like, mm. and sometimes it would work at one track and not at the other, other. and you had to go find that out yourself <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be like 
right up the front for one track and then you'd be down the back for the next one. It's like, mm. Mm, maybe we should take that out for that track. It's like, mm. yeah, we probably should. Mm. But it was just unreal to watch all that unfold. Yeah. But well, yeah, the Tickford time. So yeah, 2012, um, I was just learning the car because the car was so different to drive. Like mm. I wasn't used to that style of car and the way they set it up. And it took me ages to get the hang of it. Um, 2013, we got the car of the future, mm-hmm. the new car. Car, okay, yep. And I think... I can't remember, but there was like a big, big parody talk back then because mm-hmm. um, the Ford got docked a little bit of rear wing. Always happens with always, the new. Always, always happens. New, new, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. happens. Mm. And we did all the testing on, you know, more angled rear wing. And then for the race, we had to take it off and our car was just sucked for a bit until we could figure out how to rebalance it. And um, 14, oh, I think I had a really bad year. I had no pace until... They changed the car for the very last round mm-hmm. and that was at Homebush and that sort of brought all my pace back and I was sort of, I got a podium, I think, for the first time that year. Mm-hmm. I had a really dim year. And then 15, we got the FGX and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just like one of the best cars, supercars at that time. It was, the aero was heaps better mm-hmm. and yeah, we went pretty close to winning the championship. Sure. We ended up third. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Mark won the championship. I finished third. And yeah, we put on some really good races, won a few races, got some poles and yeah. And then, un- unfortunately, then I had to move on to Erebus so, and mm. start that chapter. Mm. But uh, in, in summing up Tickford here, a couple of, couple of things firstly, um, they're going through a period of change there at the moment, a, 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 mm. a reshaping, if you yep. will. Um, do you feel like you were kind of there at, at the zenith for them maybe in some respects? It was a pretty, pretty decent What's period, wasn't mean? it? Is that like, 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 <laughs> like the peak or, or oh, yeah. uh, you know, like a... Yeah, yeah. I suppose like... Mm. Um, I was there when I was the third car and then, you know, Rod Nash was, he was the third car license owner Mm -hmm. and then he ended up buying the whole team itself with Sven Burkhartz Mm -hmm. and, um, Rusty French. So Mm -hmm. I kind of watched all that unfold. And at the time Sven was my manager. Wow. He was like looking after all my affairs and, Mm -hmm. um, everything like that. So I watched him become a team owner and, Mm -hmm. and go on to run a team. It was Mm -hmm. weird. It was so weird. Who the hell, who the hell invented the shoey? Because who do it? (laughs) Dan Ricardo does it. Um, I, 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 you know, various people have put their hand up and said that it's. I actually stole it off someone. Who? Ryle Harris. It is. So, so is Ryle? Do you believe the original? I think so. Innovator of this. Hundred percent. Really? Is. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. crazy. I love Ryle. He's so much fun. <laughs> but I watched him do it. Um, did he win at Perth, the mm. Ute race? Mm. And I said, oh, next time I'd win a race, I'm going to do, do that. that. And it was the next race we went to was Darwin. I'm like, <laughs> I have to do it. I have to do it. So I did it. And everyone's like, what are you doing, you dickhead? Like, isn't that disgusting? So awesome. No. Yeah, I know. And yeah. everyone gave me shit for it. Mm. And then all of a sudden it took off and went crazy. So, yeah, yeah. something I've helped you, start you, you, it. I didn't well, s- you, you helped push along. Yeah, so. I was the... Vice President. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Vice President Shuey. As is, you, as is your way, you know that you can't sort of keep doing the same trick. So at some point, no. we started hurling pot plants off the <laughs> oh, <no>. podium. Funny, <laughs> what was the backlash from that? <laughs> well, I, there wasn't much backlash back no. then. Um, Triple J actually rang me up. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? They said, why'd you do it? Yeah. And I said, I don't know, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> and that, I think to this day, I'm the only supercar driver to make it to Triple J. Yeah. I think. Okay. Uh, they actually rang me up from an exclusive interview and everything. It was like, okay. oh, it's all about the podium celebration. It wasn't about winning. Yeah. Um, and you relived it too, didn't you? I, I did, yeah. Year. Ten yeah. years later, Not I won it. that yeah. race and there was still pot plants there. I'm like, oh, I'll do it for old time's Tom's sake. sake. And everyone, yeah. everyone from my team's like, no, <laughs> don't. Because now you get fines. Because... Yeah. Uh, in 2018, at, at was it 18? Mm. At the Grand Prix, we, we I think we won the last race there. Mm. And I dropped, you know, we used to drop the champagne bottle off the podium. Yep. And Dennis was there downstairs to catch it, and he didn't catch it, and it smashed everywhere, all in front of the Formula One pits. And ever since then, they brought in a rule that you're going to get fined. <laughs> OH&S, so, David. Yeah, OH&S, yeah. <laughs> so I'm the explorer of OH&S oh, in yeah. many ways. So yeah, ever since then, um, everyone's been a bit scared to throw stuff off. <laughs> Grabbed a fire extinguisher. Too. Got a fire extinguisher, yeah. <laughs> what? It, it didn't go how I planned. I planned to go it so differently. I thought it was going to be one of the CO2 ones. It was yes. going to like disperse all this like smoke everywhere <laughs> and everyone won't be able to breathe and they'll be on the ground dying, coughing and, and laughing at the same time. And I pressed the thing and it just, it was like one of those electrical ones and it just was, it was just shit. It was just terrible. <laughs> like a trickling hose. Yeah, it was so bad, man. It was just average. But uh, yeah, mm. 
Oh, you know, you, you win a race, celebrate. Gotta, Every, this, everyone I mean, gets this up gets there. gets back to what we talked about about yeah. character, mate. It, it should be, in my opinion, encouraged. Do, do, do the because when you, when you win a race, that is the happiest time of your moment. Uh, sorry, mm. happiest moment of your life, pretty much. Mm. But everyone gets up there and just accepts the trophy because it's fucking go mental. Yeah, like, do something. Yeah, it's trash weird. the stage, whatever. Yeah, whatever four, happens. Four percent, four percent, and yeah, you've had a, you've had a win. You've had a win, yeah, mm. and mm. you should be you should be stoked. I'm over the moon, like. You could you couldn't say anything to me to bring me down. I was I'd be that happy. So, mm. yeah, it's, that's how I feel, and that's how I I, I celebrate. But life is overregulated for all sorts of stupid reasons now. In Australia, I, I, I know it is, that. Yes. Yeah, in Australia, it is. Sorry, <laughs> yes. And I've, I actually last year when the World Tour came for TCR, all those international drivers said, "We love your country. It's amazing." But they all go, too many "Oh my rules. god, too many rules. Too, too many, too rules, many yeah. rules. Too many rules." In um, Australia, we've got a habit of making new rules but not taking out old ones. ones. <laughs> so, so where I'm kind of going here is. Does the sport, I mean, I, I, I want to say Stephen Richards really tried to kind of get like a driver's uh, body, a driver's group together yep. many years ago. It's gone close on a number of occasions. Do, does, do the frontline people, because I think it should be about you guys now. We don't, very sadly, have a Ford versus Holden rivalry anymore. That's gone. We still sort of do, but yeah, not but, really. But, it's but not. not the, the, to, well, going back to your marketing department days, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 dri- the drivers are the thing for me, right? Your yep. stories, who you are. Uh, you know, the comedian, as Shane Jacobson said, that goes racing, you know, yeah, whatever. We, we, we need stuff like that, right? So my point is, do you feel like you guys have enough of a say at the table and does the sport need something like that? And could it actually really, uh, you know, could it actually work? Would uh, it work? Yeah, that's a hard, really mm. hard question. I've tried to start an association up before. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, when I went through all my shit in 2015 mm-hmm. with the uh, famous... Yeah. Wagon. The wagon. The wagon. The, yeah. Let's leave it the at Volkswagen. that. The Volkswagen. Yes. Was that a scene? It was a line out of a movie, wasn't it? Was it a... Um... It's out of Kill Bill. That's it, Kill Bill. Thank yeah. you. I couldn't remember. Go. Keep going. Yes. Let's leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> you were there that round, weren't you? I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. You yes. were. Yeah. Um, and I was like, all right, I felt so hard done over by the sport that, you know, I need. I felt like there was no avenue for us to explain anything or mm-hmm. tell our story or anything, and that's why mm-hmm. I tried to get an associated, association started. Mm-hmm. But out of that um, came our podcast. Yeah. Because I wrote the basis to our podcast, and I said, I wrote, I wrote like the little business plan. Uh, mm. This is what we want. This is what we want to do. Da da da. This in 2015. Yep. And it wasn't until Michael Caruso wasn't racing full time that he rang me up and said, "Hey, do you still want to do that podcast?" Like three years later, yep. <laughs> I was like, "Dude, of course. I've always wanted to do it." Mm. So that's what kind of started that, and that that gave us the avenue to sort of voice, mate, to mm. like long form conversation. Exactly mm. what you do is to mm. explain your story and your case a lot better than. You know, and a people, sound bite people, or, yes, or a people bloody, read one word yeah. and go, oh, he's a dickhead or, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. happens. So, yeah, that's kind of the thesis of that. But, yeah, our sport would 100% run more smoother, run more professionally if there was some... You'd have a bit of voice at the table, you guys, yeah, too, for I sure. feel, like, I think. Yeah. At, at the mm. minute, the, the, the teams uh, run the sport because yes. they're, you know, they have the controlling interests where the mm. drivers, we're just paid uh, subcontractors, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't really... they They... They care, I suppose, a little mm. bit, but probably not to the mm. extent what the what the fans think. Mm-hmm. You know, the fans really think that you know a driver makes a team, but at the end of the day, we kind of don't. Okay, um, the team mm. makes a team, and we're just the mm. we're just the organic component mm. <laughs> behind mm. the steering wheel. Mm. So you know, I think yeah, definitely we need an association. Mm. Uh, we need well some form of some form of representation at, at, on the board level or mm. whatever, whatever we can do to help out you mm. know we've got our drivers chat that um was really helpful last year that was the first mm. time we all had a, a whatsapp group and we'd all talk about issues from the track uh, safety perspective or the running of the calendar or running of the day happened or whatever so there's kind of a framework there a loose framework yeah, it's, it's, already. it's, a, it's okay. a unofficial mm. there is definitely an unofficial and Chaz has tried to really really hard to get some sort of um what's the word, like binding agreement together, but I don't, mm. I'm not sure how that's going, but okay. yes, the, the team owners don't want it because they think it, they think we'll be asking for, you know, better conditions, more mm. money, that sort mm. of things. Mm. Um, it's needed. In yeah, my it is, it is hundred percent needed. needed yeah, yeah. So, and it's not, it's, and it's not an out of place thing with, I mean, Formula One's had one for years. There's no reason why you, yeah. you shouldn't have something like that. You've touched on it there, mate, on kind of courting controversy ride from the the wagon to you know unfortunately what went down in the in the pandemic and and so on yeah. how do you how do you deal with all that stuff on the, on the run because that then gets mainstream right which then it, well um, which one first okay let's come to <laughs> let's come to the first one I, I mean i don't know 
that we need to because it cost you what it cost you twenty five large or something, didn't it? The um the the it's wagon. It's a tax deduction though, Rusty. <laughs> the, the wagon. I'm wagon, always real positive, so the wagon controversy. So it's a tax deduction because mm. it's a it's it's a made up fine. It's not from a government body, so it's it's a fake fine. It's really a fake fine. Uh-huh. Um, I paid on my credit card, so I got a large Qantas points, <laughs> and um, I bought a toaster with them. So you bought a toaster. Got a new toaster that I don't have any toast anymore. So oh. yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh. I don't, we don't have to necessarily, um, it was like a horrific time in my life because there was so much oddness going on. There was no communication going on. I had no idea what to, what was going to happen. So, mm. um, I was just sitting down doing my debrief notes at the end of the day and then knock at the door. I'm like, Jason Barguana, what do you want? And he goes, here's a, here's a $25,000 fine. You have to accept it. If you contest it, they're going to double it and kick you out of the sport. I'm like, Fuck. Whoa. <laughs> and I shit myself, like badly shit myself. Um, and then I sort of, I had to accept it. And I heard later that they were trying to give me a $250,000 fine, <sighs> which I, I didn't understand the severity of things, clearly. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, the, it's, it's another thing. It's, it's another, another thing. thing. I mean, it kind of gets back to what we talked about before about where is the oh, line there's, and, there's, and all that stuff, right? So I always have one more positive, one more positive go, story. Go. <laughs> I got pole that year at Bathurst. Yeah. In the shootout, and they give me a check for five thousand bucks, and all I wanted to say was five down, twenty to go. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't let me, because I, because ever since, ever since that happened and made headlines and everything, I always had like a supercars representative like staring at me for every mm. interview I was doing, yeah. making sure I wasn't going to stuff up again. Yeah. And I asked him whether I could say that, and they said no, no. Oh, fuck. Okay, that was like one of my all-time greatest like mm. lines. Anyway, mm. doesn't. You were, so, as you were saying, a lot, a lot of time since then, right? Uh, and you know, this gets back to the where is the line thing before and right and wrong in the current climate that we live in, what have you. Yeah. But but uh, what I'd like to ask is, were the girls actually okay? I mean, did you have you spoken with Simona since then or yeah. any of that sort of stuff? The They're all fine, didn't aren't care they? At all. There you they go. did not care at all. Mm. Mm. They thought like I think um, Simona didn't even know what that meant. Okay. And then yeah. obviously Renee's Renee. Mm. Um, she didn't care at all, but. I have no idea why it happened or I don't know. Mm. No mm. idea, man. Mm. But then ever since then, I realize society's taken a turn for the worse. Mm. And obviously where we are today is completely mm. down that path of mm. offense and, mm. you know, all this stuff. It's just, mm. it's too crazy. In, like, in that media training example we talked about before, that's the, that's the hard part because you... Yeah, how do you do, how how do, do you, your job? How, yeah. do you te- how do you tell someone to mm. be themselves but don't be themselves? Yeah, that's right. Don't have those thoughts? Yeah, correct. Or, yeah. or if you are... Be super careful how you articulate it, how, how you, yes. you, you know, um, yeah. I mean, it's a bit crazy in that sense because on the other hand, here we are also demanding of you to be, be characters, be yeah. characters. So what you do you know? do? You're, yeah. you're sort of caught between two worlds, aren't you? It's mm. like far out what I do. So that's why most people just go into their shell mm. and just spit out automated responses mm. or I call them NPC responses. Which are, which are, which are rubbish for media and for, it's for, rubbish for the co- fans. coverage. Exactly, mate. You know, yeah. I want to go, I, like when I grew up, I used to love watching Thomas Mazzaro talk on camera because he was mm. funny mm. and those sort of guys that they were entertaining. Mm. That's what I wanted to see. Mm. We need that back. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't, I don't know how we get that, but we, we, need, we, we need it back. Um, Have you seen UFC? Yeah. Yeah, they don't care, do they? No. They say whatever they want and the, their owner, that Dana White, just says, I don't, I'm not here to mm. tell anyone how to say to speak. Mm. They do whatever they want. want. Yeah. You brought up the podcast before. I love that, mate. I, I loved um, – <laughs> you, had, you had Murph on at one stage. It was very funny. Yeah. And you hit him up about the fact that he lives in the distance from my place, right? We can yeah, – yeah, yeah, we're a couple that. of k's yep. away. We can see each other and cry again. The next thing you're talking about – binoculars and looking through people's windows and all sorts of stuff, crazy stuff. It was do, you still, ex- do you still live there? I still live there and yep. I can see his joint in the distance. Um, so I Murph is the best. He, he's a, a great, he's working hard at the moment too. Sure um, he is. <laughs> uh, so there was you, Michael Caruso. Caruso really got his teeth into it in terms of the, the polish around the edges that was required for different things, didn't he? Yep. You could, you could free wheel, which was, which was great. And Andrew Van Leeuwen, who's off doing good things with um, Speak Cafe and mm-hmm. WorkForMotorsport.com and what have you, he bought a journalistic... Um, he uh, bought sense. He bought sense. Argument. But, but <laughs> on, I was, paper, I was... on paper, like if you walked into, to, uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, something in supercars with a whole heap of people and you said, hey, I'm going to create this podcast. Here's the three people we're going to get. People will go, oh, I don't know how Stay that's going to go. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch them. It might explode. But in fact... It, it exploded. It, it, it went it, really well. Yeah, it did. And I still, to this day, still myself, Michael and Andrew, get told when's it coming back. Yeah. And we haven't done an episode for 
four years. Mm. It's crazy, why? isn't why, it? Why did it stop, mate? Why did you? Oh, we sort of went, so largely it was supposed to be an audio-based podcast, and mm-hmm. that's how I wanted to keep it. Then we went on to KO, it became a video thing, mm. and there was a bit of artistic confliction. Mm-hmm. Um, and like going to Sydney all the time to do it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Mm. And then... Um, because you the, can do all that stuff remotely now. You can be... You can, you yeah, can but mm. there's nothing... There's nothing more genuine than a one-on-one what we're doing conversation. Now. It's like mm. if you, it, mm. even when we did it through Zoom and stuff, it still wasn't. Gotcha. It wasn't yep. the same. Like yep. you don't get the response, you don't mm. get the the cues, you don't mm. get. I don't know. It's the, just, the interaction that we've yeah, got. Yeah, that mm. human element you try mm. and capture. It wasn't the same. So, and through all the, all the all the, pandemic stuff, stuff. all that COVID vaccine mm. stuff, that was something that sort of hit the nail on the head. And ever since then, it stopped. Mm. Was was. Was there pressure up, up higher levels from supercars around some of that stuff? Or uh, really? Yeah, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Like at the end, uh, I was in Fox Sports and um, we were literally just started recording mm-hmm. and they come in and said, Reynolds has to leave. Holy. Has to leave the building. So I had to go home. And it, that was our very last time. Wow. And someone from supercars rang someone in Fox As far as mm-hmm. I'm as yeah, told, yeah. someone yeah. supercars rang someone in Fox Sports said, Reynolds can't be in that building. And then they come and kick me out, and wow, yeah, that's that's that was the, that was their very last day. Mm. Never, I mean, never got going again. I'd love to get it going back in its original form, mm. but not, not as in a video face thing, an audio, yeah, an audio, audio con- conversation. Someone listen to cleaning yeah. the house, yeah, driving your car, whatever, mm. going for a run, something mm. like that. Mm. Uh, you may may not be able to say too much about this, mate. The the COVID thing, and, and you know, you clearly had views on on vaccine and, and stow <laughs> off. So, you know, stuff like that, yeah. right? Um, how'd you get through that? You know, cause you, at the end of the how'd day. How'd you get through it? Yeah, really tough. That was a very, very hard you love, time. You love your racing and you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I love yeah. my racing. Mm. And that's why I ended up getting it. Mm. Even though it was against all my morals and my, all my health reasons. Mm-hmm. I didn't think, well, at the time when you, when you read all the reports and everything, it didn't stop transmission mm-hmm. and they were telling you it was, but it wasn't. So I, I didn't know what to believe. So, mm. um, later down the, Path, it actually turned out to be a total farce as far as I can as far as I can think. Mm. Um, and since then, I got like uh, I got something called a topic heartbeat. So what's uh, that? Uh, it's like when your when your heart skips a beat oh, wow. and it thinks you're having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So, but it's only when I was like resting. So when mm-hmm. I'm going to bed, I get this like really like heavy mm-hmm. chest, like this weird sort of palpitation. And mm-hmm. I think I'm having a heart attack, and then it'll go away a minute later and I'll be fine for a few days and then happen again. And this happened a lot for maybe a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And Is it gone now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank, well, I haven't had an episode for a while yep. and I went to all these doctors, got all these tests, got ECGs, got, um, calcium scores, got, what do you, you know, the, mm. uh, ultra, what are they called? Ult, ultrasound, ultrasound. Yeah. everything like that. And they said, no, your heart's fine. And then I saw the cardiologist and he said, it sounds like this. Wow. And yeah. And since and I haven't had a probably an episode for maybe a year. Mm. So I'm um, thankfully it hasn't been anything mm. um, too violent. So, mm. But I know people that on the other side have had, you know, horrific um, conditions from it. The journey of David Reynolds has more twists and turns than a rally track, and we love him for it. And another exciting new chapter awaits with Team 18. More on that coming up soon. Their team boss and his story is in the library. That was great to get mm. those first three and that was COVID. Always disappointed we could never have a proper podium and spray some champagne or anything But um, uh, during those years. But uh, obviously Frosty getting uh, that win was exceptionally special and it meant everything to me. It was for that hard hard slog of getting that win done and and as you know Frosty's always said I'm going to get you a win there's no dramas about that it's just when it happens it'll happen don't worry. Hopefully Davey and Charlie can come together for a few wins in 2024 and beyond. Stay tuned. Following the timeline of your career here, we naturally get to Erebus and so on and winning winning Bathurst in 2017, mate. It's cool, eh? How massive. Huge. How massive that day was. Unreal. For you. This what, is the best, one of the best days of my life. What's your most vivid recollection of that? Is it final lap? Is it, oh. what, what, what sticks out in your mind the most? Uh, just the last, like, last stint. The yeah. whole last stint when... It's was just, it just fluid and faultless and all that? Just yeah. everything. It was like a knife, a hot knife through butter. That's how it felt like. Everything was just so easy and it was just 
It's just simple. But mm. at the time, it was super intense, but mm. it was happening mm. so easily. Um, yeah, why, that... why did it come so together so well for you all? I mean, you had um, good engineering people around yep. you. You had Luke Yildon, who was rock solid. Was awesome. all, yeah, all of those unreal. things. They're, they're just good ingredients, weren't they? You know, It was just the perfect weekend for us. You mm. know, our car was fast mm. from, from lap one. It was super fast. Uh, in the dry, mainly. Mm. In the wet, it wasn't. And for most of that race, it rained. <laughs> and we were going backwards. <laughs> but when it started to dry up, you know, our car come alive. Mm. And when I saw Scott's car have an engine failure, mm-hmm. I thought to ourself, myself, that this is ours for the winning. And um, in the last stop, after in the last stop, something didn't go well. Mm-hmm. And we ended up on the back foot a little bit. But that kind of played into my hands because the track was still drying up. So there was blokes in front of me spearing off trying to be the pioneer. And that sort of sort of got me to the front. And, um, yeah, I remember the whole last six laps, I suppose, and all the butterflies in my stomach and almost throwing up three or four laps to go because I realized what's about to take place. Like we're about to win the Bathurst 1000 mm. and think about, we were the, we were one of the smallest teams, teams. in pit lane. Mm. And I always say pit lane order goes on how good your team was the year before. Mm. We were second last. So we were the second worst team winning the biggest race, taking on all the big guns. It was oh, David and Goliath. I yeah, love that. It was that. cool as well. It was that. one of the coolest days mm. ever. And mm. just the party that happened afterwards and then the end of year party we had. <laughs> we watched Bathurst again. And, Did you? Yeah, it was just hilarious. It was mm. just, yeah, it was a really, really good working bunch of guys. Like, mm. Yeah, it was so much fun. In, in your world, mate, how did that change like you, you know here's this well, kid everyone, from Albury yeah, who's you know everyone thought I was a dickhead until I won something <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose like you know you sort of you can either win the champion championship and be that champion or be the Bathurst champion mm-hmm. and I didn't realize how important Bathurst 1000 was to mm-hmm. our nation until you win it, win it yeah. you got no idea that's the only race that people watch it's mm-hmm. like the Melbourne Cup or the AFL grand final or something like that it's it's the majority of people will watch that mm. the following year um, is just the polar opposite in in the way that it played out. I had a great conversation with oh, you yeah. in, in the wake of that about, I think your words to me at the time were, I, I wanted to win it in style. And that, that's not a <laughs> that's not a, a, a wanky thing I'm saying there. I don't mean yeah, it like no, that. No, no. That's, it, that's it, how it, I said it. Yeah, that's yeah, how I would have said it. Yeah, and it was, it was about showing that, that the 2017 was certainly no fluke. No fluke. And that you were you were more than I wanted, up for the up I for wanted defense. to dominate. Yeah. That yeah. was my full intention of that weekend. Hmm. When you look back on that now, what are we? We're, we're February 2024 as we record this. So, you know, good six, <laughs> good six years on. Yeah. How do you how do you sort of Think look back it. on that and go, okay, what what what, what wasn't was right? right? What wasn't you know? Well, a funny. I said a funny thing in like the lead up to it. Hmm. Uh, I think I was on the desk talking to Jess and Scafey, hmm. and I said the only way you're going to get this trophy from me is is if if I'm in a body bag. <laughs> <laughs> Dead set. Really? Dead set. And um, I wasn't reminded until like weeks later, Daniel Kaminko told me that. I was like, oh, I did too. Shit. Wow. I almost like forecasted my own fate, wow. didn't I? But how do I rationalize that? It just was like. Firstly, how drained did you get? Like how. Oh, like, I was you know? smoked before I come to the track. Like I did. Uh, like everyone, all the news stations, all the TV stations want to talk to the last year's winners, yes, don't they? Yes. So, yeah. you know, of course you just say yes to everything. I ended yeah. up doing 35 appearances in four days. Which is way too much. Like, mm. you know, in your contract, you might do 30 appearances for the year. Mm. I did them in four days. I was smoked. Mm. And I, I, I always like to give everything. I like mm. to give myself out to, I like to, I like to give myself 100%. So, mm. you know, doing any little uh, radio interview is going to take a little bit out of me. And mm. over time, it's just going to end up amounting to something. Mm. And I got to the track and uh, my the sponsorship manager for Penrite goes, geez, man, what's wrong with you? You look fucked. He's really? Me, my eyes are all glazed over, and he goes, you look tired. I'm like, I feel fucked. Mm. And that's just that just carried on till Sunday. I just never had the time to recover. Were you were you like um, uh, stressed? Were you? Yeah. So I, well, like doing all that stuff, mm. then thinking to myself, I have to put on the performance of my life. Mm. I have to dominate this race to show everyone it wasn't mm. a fluke last year. Um, I just probably put too much pressure on myself. Qualifying mm. a pole was probably the worst thing for me. Uh, you know, qualifying on pole. Sure, you must have taken some energy out of yourself to do that, did you, mate? Oh, like to, yeah. To, yeah. When, mm. when you're driving, it's all happening mm-hmm. automatically a little bit. Mm. Um, it, qualifying a pole is the worst thing for me. Get extra media, 
Mm. Worst night's sleep. Fuck, man, my car's fast. This is this is yours to lose. Like having all these stupid thoughts, thoughts. like that. How much sleep did you get? Oh, I got like three hours, maybe in maybe two hours one night, mm. three hours the next night, two hours the night before the race. Like oh, I was just cooked in a downhill mm. spiral mm. of of yeah. I was wasn't feeling good. So mm. uh, unfortunately, I had an endpoint, and. Unfortunately, it was when I was leading the race with the fastest car with like 20 laps to go or something. So, yeah, it sucked. God, that must have been gut-wrenching. It was worse. Like one of the worst times I've ever felt. Like I I struggled to walk because my cramps were so, so bad, bad for like yeah. two, almost up until the next race was two weeks later. Yeah. And yeah. it was um, the Gold Coast race. And I struggled to walk up until arriving at the Gold Coast. Really? Because my cars were so badly cramped. My foot, my feet were so sore that I struggled just to walk around after that mm. with your diet mate what, what sort of I mean, were you doing things to try and supplement uh, vitamins um, or something yeah, I'm or, always or, I'm always mm. my diet's pretty pretty strict and i'm mm. pretty good at that everyone sees it as a um negative a, uh, no, uh, as a dehydration yes oh, sorry did. sorry yeah but i actually yeah. suffered something called adrenal fatigue okay so um obviously you know adrenals adrenaline that's what gets you up in the morning and mm. gets you ready for the fight and I think my body had enough and couldn't pump any more adrenaline to keep the fight going, so it just started shutting parts of my body down. Wow. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> you learn a lot, hey? hey I learn, learn a lot, lot about them. myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, everyone just sees that. Oh, you drink your pickle juice, that will fix them. Like, no, 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 no. it was just you need rest. Mm. That's the only thing that, that gets your, you know, your mm. adrenals back in function. And every, all the drivers would know about this or anyone that's had a massive weekend, mm -hmm. either on the piss or... Or, you know, driving hard over the weekend, that Monday, Tuesday, you feel absolutely stuffed. Mm. And it's because of, you know, it's mm. just everything, all the... It's like someone's the, pulled a battery out of you, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, basically, yeah. Someone's mm. just, you know, yanked all your energy out of you and it's through your adrenal glands, apparently. Mm. So, mm. Um, yeah, that's mm. that was my story. And Can, it sucked, though, because, you know, if I had my time again, and if the team had their time again, mm. you know, they would probably say, you know, maybe do five, six appearances. appearances. Do the big ones, don't mm. do all the small ones. Mm. And that's a lesson that I think we all learned together of how to manage people's energy throughout the race weekend. Because mm. at the end of the day, everyone's everyone has a finite amount of energy. Um, at the end of the day, we are athletes behind the wheel. We need to give our best performance um, every time we get in the car, and we do that in our freshest, most most um, energetic state. Mm. And you know, doing doing everything that you're doing, all these appearances just really took it out of me. Mm. So you know, I think um, I th uh, at the end of the year. Uh, DJ learnt obviously I went on record and spoke about that and Ryan's story said at the end of the year when Scott won the championship that year they actually stopped all their appearances in the lead up to the last race so he could just fully concentrate on his job at hand Is that based right? on what I told them told them wow, yeah. wow. isn't that cool mm, very I very. taught Ryan Story something <laughs> <laughs> and he's that's smart, hard to do <laughs> he's a smart guy okay um, we've been talking for a little bit here but I'll get I'll get to a few key ones to finish um, that's all right. Got you all might, the time in the world for you, 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 you may or may not be able to talk about it. Why did you leave Erebus? You had a massive deal with them and, you know, and how difficult was that to do? Um, yeah, very, very difficult to do. Mm. Uh, so. If you can't say, you can't say. Don't, yeah, don't get into don't it. If you don't know no, what I'm allowed to say. Then don't, then don't. I, I'm very respectful of that stuff. Okay. okay did you feel reinvigorated at Groves? Because the growth that joint's gone through, the things that yeah. they have done, I mean, I know you've gone on to, which we'll get to in a second, a great new opportunity as well. But man, that whole joint has come alive there. They're in great shape. In really good shape. Really mm. good team. Mm. Unreal to be a part of and watch it all grow. Grow. Yeah. So obviously I joined Kelly Race, Kelly Grove Racing when mm -hmm. it was half Todd, half um, Grove family. And then at the end of that year, the Groves took over everything. And um, yeah, they employed people like David Couchy from Triple uh, Eight to run the team. And he brought a whole new perspective as to what they were doing to win all their races, races. and all their championships. Yeah. I'm like, shit, man, that's got to be – like it was It was like how do we compete with those guys when the, when they have all this other stuff at their disposable mm. – at their disposal. Disposable, yeah. Disposable, idiot. Um, that's yes, a shaver. That's <laughs> a, a, it is a, it is a, is a, it's a Disposable is many things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was like it was really, really cool to watch him go about his job and, and try and put all that ethos into every all the other workers and, and watch – he he was pretty much the person that sort of turned that place around. I like to say, mm. he really come in and did a fantastic job as the engineering department, um, making sure they you know down to the finest details and and everything like that. So it was it was really really cool to see mm. and turned our cars around because we went from 
you know, at the end of 2021, we were not mm. very fast. And then we rolled up at, um, uh, Eastern Creek for the test day. And like, we were one of the fastest cars. It was so cool to just watch that turnaround in such mm. a short, short space. Mm. And then, um, yeah, the year, you know, after the Erebus stuff, it probably took me maybe about a year to get over that mentally, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a bit longer. I probably suffered for a little bit. Um, but then, you know, I had some really good people around to sort of build me back up and, and start to believe in myself again and yep. started, you know, performing really well. And it was humming toward the yeah, end of 2023, about, wasn't it? Like, you know, just... Well, like 2022, I'm talking mm, about. Mm. And then obviously Gen 3 came along and, mm. you know, we were on the Ford side, you know, arguably the, not the not the better side. Mm -hmm. And But I, I still believe our car was really good. Mm. Even though the results weren't good, our car was probably one of the better better Fords Packages. out there. Mm. And that well, didn't, didn't highlight until we sort of, the last four rounds when we got the bigger wing from the category and, mm. you know... We got four podiums mm. on my car in a row. Matt Matt Payne won won the final race mm. for a rookie, which is unbelievable. Mm. He's yeah, a great that, kid with a bright future. He's unreal, mm. isn't he? He's mm. such mm. a fun kid to have. Mm. Like mm. I had such a good time with him. I didn't mm. really know how I was going to take him, yeah. but I had the best time with him. And Excellent. Loved hanging out with him. It was so yeah. much fun. Um, yeah, but to, but to watch that place, you know, turn into the powerhouse it is today, mm. it's yeah, really really cool to see. So you reunite with Frosty. You're now with Charlie's. You're yep. at Team 18. You've gone forward to Camaro. They've worked over the summer period to try and iron out some some differences between the the cars uh, performance wise, get better parity. Yep. Do you feel like you guys are in good shape for the twenty four season? I hope so. Mm. I you don't really know how mm. you're going to go until you turn up mm. at the first round and when the timesheets start rolling out. Mm. But in testing, you know, we were pretty comfortable with our car. You know, we only had a, our first day together the other day, mm. and I'm I'm working with um Richard Holloway, Crusty. Nice, nice. And I haven't worked for him. Or worked with him since 2008 mm -hmm. when I joined Paul Dumbrell in the Autobahn car. Car, yeah. Um, so yeah, he was yeah, just a wealth of knowledge, knowledge. and experience, yeah. and, and just so cool, so chill, and and so so easy to get along with. So I'm 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 loving it. I'm really really loving it. Every day I turn up to work, or every day I turn up to the. I, I call it the office, but the not team. A, not a 10 to 5. <laughs> not a 10 to 5. Some days, you never know. You might turn up then. Um, yeah, I, I turn up with a big smile on my face and I, turn, I walk up, walk in there and everyone's happy and, mm. and just it's a really cool working environment. It's got those, stuff. That, that like really good feeling about it that I think I'm going to thrive in. So yeah, I can't wait for the season to get underway. I, you know, we've got a long, we've got a bit of a road ahead of us to mm -hmm. sort of sort some of our engineering things out, Thanks. but I think we'll get there. Good stuff. Nice to hear that positivity in your voice. Yeah, it's can, unreal. I love it, man. It's can, so cool. Can we finish on a positive note? Always. The RX-7. The RX-7. Now, is the, am I right in saying this is your first car? It's and my first car. You've got it. Did you Have you kept it the whole way along or you got yeah. it back? What did you do? No, you, you, I've, you kept, I've kept it. it. But now you're in resto mode. Is well, that right? It's, or? It's, it's the first car I've ever bought. Okay. And I've, what series is it? Series one. Uh, series one, nineteen seventy nine. A twelve A or, or well, it started life out as a twelve A Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, it was all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it for a thousand dollars. It was Did like you? it was a shocking car. It was buggered, and um, I spent I was sixteen or fifteen when I bought it, and I got it ready for paint when I was sixteen, and mm -hmm. and watched all that happen, and tried to yeah. realize I didn't want to be a panel beater after that because mm -hmm. this the. The amount of hours he spent rubbing back stuff and all that. It was just crap. I'm not good at this. I'm not I, good I, at this. I hated it. I realized I hated work, so I have to do something. <laughs> I don't know. What else happened? Um, and then, uh, so yeah, got it going when I was about 17. Mm -hmm. uh, put some P plates on it, drove it around for a bit. I uh, got this really big engine for it, like a 13B turbo after uh, my engine uh, shut itself. I think it broke. Like a proof report? What'd you put? What, what is it? Uh, uh, it's a 13B turbo, but turbo, the yeah. original engine, I think it failed when I was doing donuts on my school oval <laughs> late at night, I think. And we had don't to push it Don't try this at home, kids. Yes. Yeah, don't, don't do this at home, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is it going to become and when will it be on the road? I don't know if that's going to make it. <laughs> um, so the last time it drove was 2006. Yeah. And ever since then, it sat in my mum and dad's shed in Albury. And I literally... Dusted dad's, it off. Yeah, dad's yeah. sick of looking at it, just under the covers. Yeah. And so I said, I'll, I'll take it and, and try and get it going again. And yeah, it's almost going. It's only a f maybe a few weeks off getting it going, fully going again. And it, like there was nothing wrong with it. Mega. The engine was fine. The only thing that was wrong was all the brakes were shot because uh -huh. all the seals were buggered. Buggered, yeah. Uh, the engine was completely fine. Uh, the clutch was buggered. And some of the regulations has changed. So I have to like move some fuel pumps around and okay. whatnot. So yeah. Um, 
yeah, I'm not doing any of the work because I'm just a driver at the end of the day <laughs> and I know nothing about cars. So uh, I've got a friend of mine uh, to work work on it. Good stuff. Brother, it's been fantastic to get you in the studio. It's been long overdue. Yeah, no, it's been too long. It's been too long. I'm, did you I'm, come on our podcast at all? I, I don't know that I we, did in the end. I, no. I, did I come on? I think you lived in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I mean, I, I genuinely hope at some point you can, can reignite that. I hope that Team 18 gives you the the same kind of buzz that you've been getting in recent years because I think that's that's ace. Congratulations on things that I've um, been very. I feel very fortunate along the way to have been there at a couple of key moments, like your Bathurst <laughs> in 2017, mate. And um, well done. Keep powering. Thanks, man. And I'm going to tell you again. I love you, Rusty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you told know that, that to the whole world. You know that, don't know. you? <laughs> See, like when I'm happy, I just do stupid, stupid shit. Thing. Yeah, was, I was love awesome. it. I, I have a photo of that somewhere where you're. You? I'm. I'm around the corner on a microphone Bathurst podium is unfolding and I'm you know <laughs> big voiceover guy ladies and gentlemen second place and, whatever the it may have been. and then you come out of nowhere I don't know whether you're Grabbed on someone's it. shoulders and you oh, I love you I love you microphone <laughs> <laughs> don't ever change bro. thanks thank man. you cheers cheers Rusty's Garage is written and presented by me Greg Rust Series editor and producer is Thomas Dallard. Audio production by Link Kelly. If you've got a guest suggestion, get in touch with me via social media. The Garage, that's where a journey begins with a tank full of passion-fueled stories. Stories.